I'm very glad to be able to introduce uh, our keynote speaker for today, who is Patrick Lehner. He's from the Institute uh, of uh, Open Innovation in Science, and uh, he's an uh, expert in um, research, funding, um, assessment, and um, innovation strategies. And um, one of uh, in his toolbox, he has also uh, surveys, and uh, so he's doing this on a very high professional level. And since we are planning to do, and we did already surveys in workgroup one and in workgroup three, um, at least, then I think this is a good addition to our network. Yeah, and so I'm happy to that you are here and that you will give us an overview about your work. Okay. So, thank you very much, Silvia. Uh, we, we are honored to be here. I say we because uh, actually Cristiani was also invited to give the keynote talk, but we uh, wanted to attend the meeting both as we are new in this uh, network. Uh, she was unfortunately not able to fly, so I, I'm doing it on behalf of us too. Uh, I want, uh, would like very briefly to introduce what we are doing at the center, show a little bit what, what we have done and maybe also inspiring some, some thoughts with, with that uh, to follow them up in the kind of work groups. So uh, we are, uh, Silvia said, we are at the Ludwig Boltzmann Society, Gesellschaft in, in Vienna. Uh, it's called Open Innovation in Science Center. Uh, what we are doing as a center, it's a kind of a national competence center. We are doing on the one hand implementation and on the other hand research. So having both and capability building all around open innovation in science. Uh, when you now ask, you know, what 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 is this open innovation in science about? Like a new term? I, I think there is a long tradition of participative research, transdisciplinary research, open innovation in science. It was also termed from our research group. It is on purpose purposefully managing knowledge flows inside and outside to increase on the one hand the societal relevance of the research, and on the other hand also the the research itself. There is this paper about I have put uh, here on the slide. I think you should not read it, but it's it's mainly about like opening up the, the the research process in terms from open innovation came from the business. That's a little bit you know like in the business books you find it. So it's. Uh, uh, it, it was kind of like the 1780s, you know, innovation was done inside firms, you know, not using too much knowledge from outside, protecting the knowledge. And there then, you know, in the end of the uh, 90s, 2000, there have been seen changes where firms are kind of actively on uh, strategically uh, having partnerships, engaging in the knowledge, uh, in the innovation process, a kind of uh, having knowledge flows uh, uh, from outside as well. So really uh, all what I always say, you know, and that's uh, we had that yesterday in the discussion also when we talk about like involvement of patient, patient organization, always also be clear about, you know, it's not something, another tick box because we say, okay, it's at the moment fashionable, you know, to work together. It is, you know, what what is in it for both sides, you know, what is in it for the research, what is in it for the patient, patient organization. So it's always this proposal strategic. Uh, and our focus at the at, at the at the center is really a kind of on these open and collaborative research practices together with citizen, patient, patients organization, and stakeholder groups uh, to increase the societal impact. That's very much uh, when you kind of you know uh, into this uh, uh, theory of you know research. Uh, Helga Novotny is on our board and she termed the mode two research. It is really the kind of research that is done together with stakeholder groups with patients so that there is a strong alignment between the research, the societal needs, the wishes. And uh, that's that's a little bit what, where we are kind of, you know, trying to uh, do capability building, setting up project, but also doing research on the project. And I will show a little bit later what does this then mean. All, all together, that's also a kind of on the European level. I think that's also why we are here and why also often patient involvement is a big term. So it's it, it's 
it's coming in different fields on the European Union, citizen engagement with the missions comes very much in. Uh, there is now a working group which I attended on knowledge valorization and citizen engagement, you know, so it's uh, these the, these things are coming from a policy level very much, but also in Germany, I have here the Nachgefragt. So in 2022, there was this exercise where they said, like, you know, to the German citizens, you know, give us your our, your research questions for uh, which we should maybe invest in. Uh, this was uh, some of the slides some persons have seen already yesterday in the working group, so uh, we keep it rather short here. That's then the why, you know, often in, in literature, there is, you know, uh, ooh, why should now research science uh, involve society more? There are some reasons. On the one hand, these are kind of scarce resources and, you know, how to decide where to, uh, to give the resources. There are maybe research gaps. There is a strong alignment, as I said, the relevance uh, and legitimacy. It's trust in science is increased in development. So th these are typical if you if you kind of go through the papers on uh, research partnerships, uh, research involvement. So you find in different terms, strengths, disciplinary research, that's a, uh, what often is found, you know, uh, that's why, uh, why it should be done and can beneficial, you know. Uh, then here, that's a little bit just to say, you know, when we say, okay, we have the why, it's the who, and that's one of the uh, the projects we have been doing. It's on uh, newborn screening for rare diseases, and you know, uh, researchers uh, partners are kind of developing an artificial intelligence uh, with uh, on uh, electronic health records to screen for rare diseases, and then we said, okay, you know. Once y you do that, you know, and the algorithm, we're sure you can do that. How, how this going to be implemented? What is the system? And what we are here try is kind of to map the system and the critical factors, you know, wh whom you have to involve early on that when the in, in the end you have the algorithm and say, you know, this works, we have like the, the proof of concept. This is going to be rolled out in the hospital, in the system. So and then you have all different kind of stakeholders. It's getting really messy, you know, uh, but then there you have some critical stakeholders where you say, OK, these ones you have to involve early on. Patients are always, always among them, you know, especially in the rare diseases. You have like a lot of patient organization on the European level doing a lot of advocacy. They are your partners uh, if you uh, involve them early on. But then also, you know, IT providers, uh, the uh, legal officer from hospitals, so lots of, but it's just to give you, you know, whom to involve. It's not always clear. You have to have really a, this, a kind of a strategic uh, approach to it. Then there is the how, you know, of, of, of the involvement. We have, uh, this is kind of, you know, Einstein letters. It's, I think it's already from the 60s, you know, 60 years about it's kind of you you see a little bit you know uh you can do the in information which is a good thing so it's not a kind of you know it's i didn't put it as a letter because it's not a it's not a letter you climb up and it's getting better you know uh because information science communication is very important you know raising awareness as well but then you also have different uh, ways of involvement. You know, you have to consult like we're doing it in surveys. Uh, you you involve that involvement meets also a little bit having co-decision rights between uh, different uh, stakeholder groups. And you even could go all the far that, uh, you know, the lead, the lead is not with the researchers themselves, but it's with a community. We had like in UK this year, interesting calls where, you know, communities could base in a proposal where work together with researchers and so on. it's all things at the moment I would say also experimental to see you know how that works what is the impact of that but but still I think it's interesting always uh, to consider that in uh, I think what is important uh, here on the how uh, it is the, the distinction between participation we know that already we have lots of uh, kind of patient citizen participating in research, you know, they are filling in survey, uh, testing prototypes, you have these focus groups and they are kind of working and you see how they use app or so, or 
uh, really the in involvement. Involvement, you have all, you know, different flavors of people can, uh, citizens or patients can be in a steering committee. Uh, they can be on a, a competence group. They can work together on research questions. They can do co-design workshops, uh, uh, analyzing data together with researcher, making sense of it. So I think that's often when we are kind of then talking about, it's then really important to distinguish uh, it's easy with the, you know, Involve UK has this one. Uh, it says, you know, the one is done uh, uh, with uh, on researchers and they are on citizens. So research is done on and the other one is with or by uh, research, uh, citizens. So that's a little bit the involvement is really, you know, done together. And uh, whereas the participation is uh, done about and then you know when you say well okay it is kind of you know managing these knowledge flows it's involving people with different knowledge in the research i often talk now about like you know citizens patients but you know it's also you know clinicians researchers uh, it is uh, that's why i had the why i said like you know there is a a huge group of, of of stakeholders you could involve. You know, it's experts at hospitals. So uh, then you have the different the different phases in the research process. Uh, all of the phases there you can consider of involvement. And one is also in the uh, priority setting in the uh, in the research topic. And I will would like now from one example because this is now you know we have all the elements we have like okay why you involve whom do you involve in which phase uh, show you a little bit from an example from what we did how how that worked uh, out and you know uh, 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 how we tried to to have all all the cycle with an involvement and what the impact was of this so uh, so maybe in the priority setting, that's the you know the 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 first the first phase where you say okay you identify together with different stakeholders, citizen, patients, uh, different needs, different questions. You prioritize them together. So what's really uh, needed and. Uh, trying to reach a consensus. We had that yesterday in, in, in the working group already, and we had some examples, and uh, still there are a lot of questions marked behind, you know, whom to involve, what is the sample uh, of people to involve. We had that, you know, that's great to involve people in priority setting, but couldn't AI do that as well? So it's uh, still, I think, lots of uh, lots of discussions here and uh, always as I think once you set up like a project like that you have to see what are kind of you know the limits what are the hindrances what how to set it up in a, in a good way also kind of you know uh, in prioritizing there was the questions you know in small groups if someone is taking over and kind of bring him uh, in his or her priorities and pushing the group. So you have to have here also experts and kind of, you know, handling these processes. So it's not something that is done easily because it's like, okay, let's do that. Let's work together with patients and get together in a room and, you know, just uh, have some post-its. And in the end, we have some nice research question. I think there is a lot, lot to the process. And often if you see, you know, these processes are running over one year and having some costs you know with facilitation and all these things uh here in the priority setting i will not go into uh that so we, we see that priority setting in in especially in the health science is quite it's not common you know because you 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 find in our database 1000 examples and it's Sounds huge, 1,000 examples, but you know it's uh, it is. I think it's a start. So you you have it in all different fields, from diabetes to tinnitus to mental health uh, to osteoarthritis. So in all all different fields, if you say you know mm, I would learn uh, like to know a little bit more about uh, you know this priority setting, I can only advise you to take a look on the one hand from Christiane the, the scoping review. 
she did. So at uh, that time in 2020, she had like se over 700 examples, putting them in a scoping review, saying, you know, what different methods have been used, who has been involved, what was the, the output, well, was this taken up? And uh, in, in the in the database, so so she made also all these uh, kind of examples available for the database, so you can very easily find it in the internet. Uh, and now it's nearly 1,000, so it's growing. Uh, even uh, you can really access it there, take a look, and say, you know, I'm gonna look if there are some osteoarthritis uh, priority setting projects, and you will find at the moment five in the in the database. To take a look. Two of them we did take uh, a look yesterday. Uh, so I I now I'm going. Have, having set a little bit the part of uh, priority setting, I would like to give you an example what what we did. It was called Reden, Reden Sie mit. So it started 2015. Reden Sie mit, it's in English, it was then tell us. It was the Ludwig Boltzmann Society decided, you know, uh, how, to, how to set up uh, research groups. So normally it was the way, you know, the, the board kind of coming together and saying, you know, oh, maybe we could set up a research group in this and this field, or you have some strategic intelligence, you know, what the trends are. Then this time, uh, Ludwig Boltzmann Society decided to go a different way and say, okay, uh, let's start a bigger process called TELUS, uh, together with stakeholders uh, to ask in the field of mental health, you know, what are the pressing issues there? You know, what I, what is your life experience as a, a relative, as a person, uh, as a patient, as a, a carer? Uh, uh, what you experience, what you see, uh, I, are there some questions research could take up to make life better for you? So that was a kind of the main the, the main part. So it was very open. Uh, in there, there was uh, it was set up that there is a kind of an online platform where you can hand in contributions. Uh, indeed, sounds now very easy. You know, you put up a, a website and you say to people, you know, please tell us about your mental health conditions. Yeah, that didn't work that way. You know, so you had to partner with a lot of organization to build trust. You know, in the community, so that they told the, the, their people, you know, they are working with. Uh, uh, please go to that website because there is this research organization. They want to do something here. So it is a long process on the one hand, kind of building the network uh, in a community where you do this, what is called then crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing of ideas. And, and then, you know, once you have received, like we had like 400 contributions, it was not like something then we say, okay, now, now we have the question. So you have like, on the one hand, you have semantic analysis of these contributions, and then you had a, a big a jury coming from different fields. So from academics, from uh, the clinics, but also from patients, a kind of discussing going into it. And in the end, uh, recommending to the uh, Ludwig Boltzmann Society. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, before I jumped to the recommendation, just that you see, you know, where the uh, uh, where the people came from who gave the, the contribution. So it was 40% patients themselves, it's healthcare professional family members, and it was really targeted not to academics. So it was really, uh, that's also, I, I think it's important because, the, you know, the uh, academics came in in the jury, uh, so they did uh, take a look at it and say, you know, ah, that's interesting ideas, but that has been researched already. Oh, that's an interesting thing, but that has nothing to do with research. That's more kind of a policy. It needs more money for psychotherapy or something like that, you know. Uh, and in the end, uh, this this group uh, of uh, this mixed group of academics, clinicians, and uh, doctors and uh, and patients uh, gave the recommendation uh, to Ludwig Boltzmann Society to uh, fund research in the in the area of children of mentally ill parents. With all kind of what you see here is these small things. These are all kind of research questions below. So we set up a call on 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 in, in this regard and uh, and. Uh, to to have a research group working in that field. Now I think it's important to say, you know, 
it is not because we discussed it also yesterday in the in the evening there are different ways you know of of of, of involvement and i would not say that this is the you know in the list of a top 10 this is the the issue number one uh, but it is in Austria a big issue because, you know, children of mentally ill parents are not visible. They don't have a voice. So uh, we know that the, the mental health conditions often transferred from uh, parents to the, the children. There is not a lot of research. There is not a lot of uh, a kind of a assistance network. So that's why, you know, this this group said like, you know, OK, this would be a, a good area to invest in in participative research. So I think it's always important, uh, you know, to really say, you know, especially we had that yesterday, we have like 400 people uh, or 400 contribution. We had also the demographics, like three quarters uh, that's often in participation have been female and 60% academic. So you have a, a strong bias here. You have to be a, 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 aware of that, but it, uh, always to say, you know, OK, but but still uh, that was also uh, a, a topic that was chosen by the jury because that's often uh, also a problem, not only uh, or especially not only in kind of families where uh, kind of the parents are academics, but often in other uh, areas as well. So they, they did take care of this by as well. I think that's often important to know. Uh, so. Before I say what we did, you know, with this, because often you, you have this priority setting and, you know, people come together and uh, really think, OK, it's a great way to do. And in the end, you have a report and then nothing happens with there. Uh, very quickly, our research team, they did like a, a paper which was published in, in research policy uh, where they said like, OK, how do you compare these research questions coming from a crowdsourcing exercise like tell us uh, to research questions compared with uh, young researchers giving on, on a, a conference, addressing on a conference and you know, they I will not go very much into that, you know, but they set up like this experiment, they're putting like the research questions from the Reden Sie mit, from the tellers together with research questions that have been handed in in conferences or accepted in, in conferences, putting it together. Then they gave it to academics and the academics had to judge, you know, is this, you know, scientific relevant? Is this, doesn't, does this make a societal impact? And what you see, you know, it's on the fur, uh, here on the, uh, on the right hand side the first so if you take all the research questions you know you, you have a lot of research questions which are just uh, you know from from the from the patients and from public which are more or less problem statements so you have a big spread of things of research questions uh, these are not really you know scientifically or societal uh, uh, of high relevance but once you you kind of dig a little bit deeper and say, OK, uh, let's take a look, because also, you know, the ones on from the conference proceedings, they have been accepted as well. So there there has been a selection there as well. If, if we take like the 20 uh, percent, the best 20 percent, you even see that there, you know, after the select, uh, selection mechanism, the research questions from carers, from patients uh, are deemed to be on the one hand societal, on the other hand, but also scientifically highly interesting, more relevant scoring uh, higher here. So it's just I would not go too far to say, you know, you know, who, 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 who should uh, 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 who should be in charge for coming up with research questions. But I think there is a valid point that, you know, their patients, carers, relatives have high experimental knowledge, often also well educated, know very well and can bring an expertise to the table, which is in, in, important in, in doing uh, research, in analyzing data. And so that. So if you're interested in in the in the paper, you you find the link there. So m maybe to jump very, that's just what I said. The key findings. Uh, I'm going to skip that. Uh, very briefly, uh, what we did then, you know, so it's uh, really having a, a kind of the topic: uh, children of mentally ill parents 
having all these research questions below. So we made a, a call, uh, an international call. Uh, we invited uh, one. Uh, we invited 30 people to come to Vienna to be five days together in a co-creation workshop. And so we we see uh, we have seen that we got like people from all different uh, angles. So people psychiatry, psychology is anyway there, but arts, economics, uh, diff different uh, people who have applied for the workshop, uh, selected them, invited them, and they were working five days on these challenges, a kind of proposing in the end, like there was five groups uh, proposing a research proposal, which was drafted in, in these five days. So it's a draft research proposal. And in the end, uh, you know, they had this, what we heard already yesterday, they elevate the pitch. So they pitch the ideas to uh, a, a jury. The jury was also very broad. You know, you had like people from uh, practice, you had people uh, from academic background, and then two groups have been uh, selected for research funding. They work now for four years in, in these fields. And these are the, the two groups. The one is at the Medical University in Innsbruck, and the other one at the Karl Landsteiner University. Uh, one is about like a village building a, a, a kind of a, a supportive network for children with parents with mental illness. And the other one is the dot the open door is uh, strengthening uh, the connection between young people. Uh, very, very briefly, they worked, you know, uh, they had also from the governance, they had like a patient advisory board, they had a youth competence group helping them, assisting them. They worked very much with co-design, co-creation with different, uh, you know, carers, units together, the years and all. They, they have published on the one hand on the on the uh, the process, you know how they did it, but also uh, kind of published their their outcomes and their interventions they have co-developed, uh, published in international papers. And now uh, maybe what we have also seen because of this integrated approach right, right from the beginning, uh, they are lots of the things they have kind of developed are taking up. For example, the dot uh, group, the uh, open door group they have like an open it's called open to chat it's a platform where use peer-to-peer -peer learning uh peer-to-peer -peer coaching uh, is taking place with supervision and everything caritas uh, ngo in austria was taking that up and now is running in their schools the, the same with uh, the, this uh, village approach. This is taken up in, in Carinthia by Promente. They're using this village approach now uh, to assist these people. And there are also lots of small things that kind of change. For example, when you go to the hospital in, in Tyrol now, you're going to ask as an adult, you know, when you go to psychiatry, or you, uh, they're, they're, you're going to be asked, you know, uh, is there a child at home? You know, so that was never asked before, but because of this process and so, and for, for me now, uh, this is all, uh, for me, it's what uh, Ali told me yesterday, you know, when, when we went for dinner, so he said like, you know, I wasn't here in the morning and Yuri gave gave the talk and said like, you know, it's the small things that makes uh, maybe a difference. I think also here, it's not like, you know, the priority setting in the beginning. The priority setting was building an, a network of people, getting an awareness for, for a topic. It's not maybe the youth competence group or the, the patient advisory board or all the co-creations. All these are small, small things, but all, all of, in all of the phases, they were kind of thinking, you know, is there a need? to involve someone else you know what's the benefit what is the benefit for the other side to be involved because you're also a patient organization having scarce resources and have not time to you know get into the research so so i think that's that's uh, would be my uh, kind of uh, take home message uh just consider you know for uh, for also with the survey you know when, when is it good to involve uh especially also maybe patient patient organization in analysis in kind of uh talking about the results and all, all these things and and with this i i would like to end and if there are any any questions uh we are happy happy to be now in the network and but you just let us know so if we can help. thank you